Welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Today I thought I'd show you how to make shaker ornaments. Shaker cards are very popular, and I thought it'd be fun to instead make ornaments that can be kept year after year. There are many ways to do this, but I played around and came up with what I felt worked best. And I'll show you how to include these on a card so you can give them as a gift. Now, all of the products that I use today are from a Hero Arts kit. This is the My Monthly Hero Kit for October, and it is by far my favorite. Look at all the things you get here, all those dyes, stamp set, inks, embellishments, acetate, all of this you get in the kit. Now, this kit is valued at over $60, and it's only $34.99. Now, the trick with this kit is it's a limited supply thing. Once they're gone, they're gone, so I encourage you, if you are interested, to check them out. I will also be using some of the add-on products that they have available this month, but keep in mind you can use products you already have to create these projects. This kit is just very handy. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the project. For the walls of my shaker ornament, I like to use stacks of die cut cardstock rings. So I have two circle dies, one that's slightly bigger than the other. These are from a Hero Arts Infinity die set where there's a bunch of circle dies for a really good price. I'm going to position them just evenly spaced, and then I'm putting two pieces of packing tape on the back side of them to hold them together so they stay in the same position over many die cutting. You could use washi tape, but that might kind of break down after doing a lot of die cutting. The packing tape will hold up better. I put some anti-static powder tool on the sticky tape that is still showing so it doesn't ruin our cardstock. So I went ahead and I die cut a bunch of rings and I'm keeping the center circles for other projects and for some stamping. So we're not gonna let those go to waste. So by taping those two dies together, you can create the perfect rings. Here I'm going to take that same ring and I am die cutting it from some glitter cardstock. I thought that'd be fun to put on the top layer of our shaker ornament. And you can see there's also that little base if you want to turn this into a snow globe. That die is included in the kit. I ended up not using it. Now this is the stamp set that is in the kit, and I am using a Hero Arts brown ombre ink pad to kind of get an ombre look of shading to our stamped images here. This is the green. I'm just stamping different elements that I like onto the white cardstock. These are the circles that were from the center of our rings. I didn't want them to go to waste. You can see how I'm using different parts of the ink pad, the light, medium, and dark, so I get that shading to my stamped image. I really find this to be a fast way to get shaded stamped images, but you could use multiple ink pads if you want to. So I'm just going through and stamping a bunch of different images that I think I might want to use on my shaker ornaments. You'll see some of these I didn't get around to using for today's video, but I'll use them in the future. And I also stamped with some black ink these cute little images from one of the add-on stamp sets that's available this month. So this will have a different feel to it. This I can just do some quick coloring with. I stamped a bunch of critters and I'm gonna save a lot of these for some other cards also. And finally here I stamped little snowmen. I'm actually gonna save these to create some layered cards using the elements from this kit, but not for a shaker card. Okay, so then I use the coordinating dies. Uh, there are coordinating dies available for all of the stamps, and this really is gonna save me a lot of time. I just went ahead and cut out everything, and you can fussy cut if you want, but with little images like this, those coordinating dies do save some time. Now in the kit and in the add-ons, there are these hill dies. So these cut little hills or little hills with trees and then leaves the bottom edge uncut so that you can cut it to whatever shape you want. So I went ahead and did a few of these. And then what you can do is use the large circle to cut the bottom so the bottom is nice and rounded or you can just leave it uncut. And I'll show you later in the video how you can go ahead and use it with the bottom just kind of torn off. So we'll save those. I also die cut from that large circle a few solid white circles. Those will be the back of the ornament. And then here I am die cutting some acetate pieces. These are included in the kit and I'm die cutting some circles. I'm gonna do several of these. These will be the windows in my shaker, uh, shaker ornaments. So now that we have all of our stamping and die cutting done, it's time to create those backgrounds and then we can assemble our ornaments. So I'm using Distress Inks just to quickly add some color to the background. You could use colored cardstock if you'd like. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended here because a lot of it will be covered up. 
Now after I've inked it up with a few shades of blue, I have a background dye. This is new from Hero Arts. It's fantastic. It looks like falling snow. I die cut it from a scrap of cardstock and I'm using my finger to rub white pigment ink over the holes. This is going to give us some subtle little dots of circles coming down. If you want it to be more vivid, you could pounce the color on instead of blending it or you can heat emboss those little dots. But I wanted something soft in the background, so I'm just kind of blending the color over it. You could also use all these little circles that this background die cuts to create little snow to put inside your shaker cards if you want to. And I'll show you something you can do with these background dies later. I went ahead and heat set this with my heat gun so that white pigment ink would dry nicely. Now I'm just going to quickly stamp the little snow, or I'm sorry, the little Santa flying through the sky so that will be part of the background. So now we have our little background to our ornament ready, it's time to build up the walls to hold everything inside. So I have all my die cut cardstock circles here and I am going to use my Ranger Multimedium Matte Adhesive to just put a thin layer of adhesive all the way around the ring. Now you can use any adhesive you want here. However, the reason I like to use this for this technique is it dries nicely, it's very strong, and if any of it oozes out, it dries not sticky. So you don't have to worry about like all your little shaker bits getting stuck to the walls inside of your little shaker. So I find this is the best for this. I tried a bunch, but this look how quick you can put that adhesive down. Now, if you want to, you could use stick it uh, adhesive in between each layer. You can use whatever adhesive you would like. I adhered five rings on top of each other here at this point. Now you could use a craft foam die cut ring instead, but sometimes when the craft foam is that thin, it kind of distorts in shape. So I like doing the cardstock instead, and this will look nicely nice from the side when we're finished. Okay, now this is one of the things that I find very help, helpful with shakers, is to adhere some of your little shaker bits to the background, so that when you hold it up, not everything falls, some stays up. So here I've just put little dots of my adhesive and I'm just putting beads here and there glued to the background. This will keep some of the beads up and also some pieces will get kind of caught on it so they'll stay upward. Not everything just falls to the bottom when you have it standing up. I'm also going to glue a few of the sequins. And by the way, these sequins and beads are included in the Hero Arts kit. Now while that dries, we need to give those beads some time to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and create another background for another ornament. Now this one I decided for, a, I wanted a softer background. So I'm using my Clarity stencil brushes. I love these. You can use these with any ink and you just go back and forth around the edges. You can put heavier color on the edges, softer color on the center, whatever you want. So I used a little bit of cornflower blue from Hero Arts and now I'm adding just a little bit of blueprint sketch from Distress Ink on the outside edge. I really like these brushes when you want soft color. Okay, so back to our first project here. Those beads should be nice and dry. Now it's time to put an acetate piece on top of here. However, I don't like to use liquid adhesive with acetate. I don't feel it holds well. So I'm switching adhesives here to a thin double-sided tape. This is Be Creative tape and an eighth of an inch wide. And you can see I can kind of just bend it to go around the circle. It's really easy to do. It's super strong. And then when the two ends meet, you can just tear it. You want to be sure to put continuous adhesive around here. You can use a tape runner if you want to for this. But again, I like this adhesive because it's clean and you don't have any of the stickies kind of on the outside edge that your shaker bits will get stuck to. Now this is another trick with shaker cards. Here I'm putting some pieces of craft foam along the bottom. The reason I'm doing this is I'm going to put a little snowbank in my tree here on the bottom of this ornament. And if I don't block the bottom with these little pieces of craft foam, all my little shaker bits will fall behind the banks and nobody will ever see them. So I'm just kind of putting some false walls there on the bottom. Now I'm adding some of the sequins and beads from the kit. And then it's time to add our acetate die cut circle. So I'm adding that right on top, pressing very firmly. Now here's the thing, I'm not stopping here. I want to do like a double layer shaker ornament here. So there's gonna be two layers of shaker. So I'm putting some more of the double sided tape around the outside edge here. And then I'll just tear that off. And now it's time to add our first elements of like embellishments here. I've got my little snow bank. Now this little bank I'm going to glue right there on the bottom and then I'll add the tree on top of that. 
So the fun part here is you can put layers of elements on here. So you get kind of like a dimensional look. And since this is an ornament, it doesn't matter how thick you go. So this is kind of creating a little gift that you can give to someone. I think this would be fun to give to teachers or to friends in the holidays. Okay, so now I'm starting to build up some more of those rings. So I'm just gonna keep layering them up. I think I did about five of them again so that we can build another shaker window right on top of the first. Now that we have all those rings built up, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little snowbank, another one here on the bottom. So I ran some adhesive along the bottom there, and now I'm putting my snowbank on. And you can see there's lots hanging off there. All I'll do is let that dry, and once it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off the excess with my scissors. So now we have a second snowbank that's kind of set in front of the other. So now we can add some more shaker bits. This time I'm only using the beads. So I saved the sequins for the back shaker level. Now it's time to add some more double-sided tape around the outside edge and add yet another piece of the acetate right on front. Now you could save a lot of time by only doing one layer thick here, but I really thought it makes a big difference to see all that dimension inside. So I added my little deer and then a few more layers of circles, only a few, and then I put an acetate window in front of that. So there's actually three acetate circles. And now for the top one, I'm using that glitter paper ring that we created just to give a nice finishing touch. If you wanted to, you could put the little die cut base for the snow globe on this so it looks like a little snow globe, but I just decided to leave this as a little circle ornament. Now the outside of this looks nice because it's just white cardstock stacked on, um, on top of each other. If you wanted to give it a finished look, you could take some ribbon and wrap it around the outside edge nice and flat and then tie it on a bow in the top, but I decided to leave it as is. Now using one of the other New Hero Arts background dies, the one that you see up there that cuts a bunch of stars, it's a fantastic background die. I die cut a star from some of that silver glitter paper. I'm gonna glue that on top of where the tree would be and then just colored it a little bit with a gold Copic marker. Here I took a bit of string and tied it into a loop and I'm using just a little touch of the Ranger Multimedium to put a dot right here on the top of the ornament and I'll glue my string onto it and then I'll glue a bow on top of that. Now I think this would look really great with either twine or ribbon, but I'll be honest, since I moved, I have yet to find my twine and ribbon. So instead I'm using the string that you see here. But again, you could wrap a ribbon around the outside edges, tighten the bow on the top and have a perfect little ornament. So there you can see all the shaker bits and dimension in that ornament. And I wanted to uh, show you some of the elements of the other one. I did it very similar, but I added a few things I wanted to show you. Now for this one, remember we created this background earlier. I'm adding tiny little dots of that Ranger Multimedium, putting it over a coffee filter, and then adding the snow that is included in the Hero Arts kit this month. I'm just shaking it on, making sure that I'm covering all sides of those little uh, adhesive dots that we added. And I'm gonna set that aside to dry. Now after it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and once again, build up a bunch of circle rings around this so that we can start building up the walls of our little ornament. This fake snow is a lot of fun. You can leave it to kind of shake around inside the shaker if you want to, but I decided to glue all mine down. So here I have another snow bank that I'm just spreading some of the multimedium around on, and I'm going to dip it into that fake snow so that we have a little snow bank for all of our little critters to sit on. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit aside to dry. And once it's dry, you just kinda of wanna blow off any of the extra snow so that it doesn't come off in the shaker. I glued it onto the front of the shaker ornament, and now I'm just trimming away any of the excess hanging off the bottom. I use my craft knife to kind of scrape off any of the snow that's around the outside edge so that I can now put some of the double-sided tape around this so that we can add the acetate on top. Now it's time to fill up our first layer of our shaker window here. Now I'm again using the sequins and beads. I love this mix. However, keep in mind that you could use like little die cuts like those stars and dots that I showed you earlier to add to the inside also. Okay, so I'm pressing down an acetate circle right on top, and now it's time to add our little critters. So I'm just going to assemble them here. I'm using that strong double-sided tape so they don't come undone. And you can add anything you want here, any stamped images at all. You can add little embellishments and gems if you want to also. Once I have them in place, I'm gonna go ahead and start building up other rings on top. Again, I do about five or six ring rings in between each layer. 
Now here I'm using my Ranger Multimedium to put a little bit of adhesive on the bottom and the top of our little mailbox here. And what I'll do is add just the little pinches of some of that snow right to it. So you see me kind of drizzling it on here and then pressing it into the adhesive. Once that dries, I can blow away the excess. So now we have a little snow on top of our stamped images also. Now it's time to add a few more little shaker things into this front shaker window. Again, for the front shaker window, I use less shaker bits and I really only use the beads because I don't want to block anything. I don't use many sequins at all. So then I finish that off with an acetate piece in the front and the ring around that so that we can have a nice finished look to it. Okay, so now these little shaker ornaments would be fun to kind of hang on a present, but I also wanted to show you how you could present it with a card. So to create that fun star background, I'm taking a piece of white cardstock and I'm covering one side of it with stick it double-sided adhesive. Now you could use any adhesive, you just want to stick two pieces of cardstock together. Okay, so now that I have adhesive on one side of this cardstock, I'm going to peel the release paper off and put another piece of cardstock to it. So I have two pieces of cardstock stuck together. Now I'm going to run this through my die cut machine with that star background die. Now this is a fantastic background die and since we doubled up two layers of cardstock, it's not going to cut through all of it. It's only going to cut through the top layer so it looks like we inlaid all of those little stars but we really didn't. So it's a really fun way to create a background. Now I colored a few of the stars with two different shades of Copic marker and I added some shimmer pen to some of the stars also just for a little bit of interest. But you could color all these stars different colors, make like an ombre background, it'd be really fun. So now this ornament I don't want to glue to the front of the card because I want them to be able to take it off. So I'm just kind of making a little pocket for it to hold in place. Now this shaker is dry completely now. So we have that string holding on the top of the ornament. You can see it hangs nicely and you can see all the shaker bits move around really nicely in there. I think this is such a fun gift. So I'm going to hold the ornament to the front of that star panel. I'm going to put some strong double-sided tape on the ends of our vellum piece where I have white heat embossed a sentiment. The sentiment is one of my favorites and it's from the kit stamp set. I'm going to hold this right across the little ornament. Then I'm going to wrap the ends of the vellum around the back of the panel there. I'm doing this so that there's enough room for that thick ornament to stay in place in there. So now we have a nice little pocket for this. Now I wouldn't mail this as is. I would use a padded envelope if you are going to mail it or you can hand give it to somebody. Use some strong double sided tape to put it on the front of the card so I can write a message on the inside. So there you have a way you can use your shaker elements to create shaker ornaments. Now keep in mind all the things that we did today could be done on a card or you can use all these elements to maybe make some layering with masking on the front of the card. There are many ways you can use these pieces if you aren't into creating shakers. So thank you very much for sticking with me for a long video, lots of information to share. All the products I used are linked in my YouTube description below, but there's much more on my blog, so be sure to head there, including a giveaway. Now in the middle are three other shaker card videos that might be of interest to you. These all have a lot less bulk, so if you just want to create a general card with the shaker elements, you can check out these videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.